What's up, what's happening? You already know who it is and what it is. It's your boy Q Walker, AKA Nephew Q, host of Beyond the Game. And I'm bringing to you a new show that I'm checking out. It's called Conversations with Q. And what this show is gonna be about is life, love, sports, and everything in between. But forget all that. Let me go ahead and introduce y'all to my first guest on Conversations with Q. I got my man, Derek Stevenson, AKA D Money, host of Sports and Discourse. Make sure y'all check that show out on YouTube as well. A lot of great content on there. But enough about me. Go introduce yourself for the people one time. D-Money. What's up, man? Listen, um, it's your boy, Derek, Sports and Discourse, man. Um, we about to just get busy, man. We gonna probably knock out two or three shows for y'all real quick. <laughs> so y'all just stay tuned, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. All that, all Do all that. that for my dog, man. All that, all that. So anyways, let's get right on into Conversations with Q. Like I said, man, it's just a laid back topic conversation. So first and foremost, for the people who don't know who you are, who is Derek Stevenson? Shit, man, I'm keeping a hundred with you, man. I'm just a regular nigga, though. I like, <laughs> ain't really, I mean. Just the know, regular everyday. I, I ain't making no noise, man. I just work every day, take care of my daughter, take care of my wife. That's all. Okay, so we're we going to get into the, the wife and the daughter aspect first. Yeah, I mean, uh, a little bit later on. But first, talk to me about sports and discourse, how it came about, what's the show about, because, you know, people who are watching this want to know what your show is all about. So let right. us know how it started and what's it, what it's all about. Right. So basically, man, it actually, I was inspired when, you, Ike, and Chris had y'all's initial meeting um, for Spoken Minds, right? Because a long time ago, I had like, you know, started studying filmmaking and production. Um, I took classes at BCTC. I did a lot of studying on my own. I took classes at National College. Um, and then I bought a whole bunch of equipment, right? Just sitting there. And then I just didn't do shit, man. I made a couple of videos and shit when I was in school or whatever. But then I just left all the shit, had it. <laughs> just left it. Just you know what I'm saying? Collecting dust. Collecting dust, had it in storage unit. And my daughter had hit me up and she was like, you know, she was thinking about doing a YouTube channel. So I was like, man, I got tons of shit. Take it. So I gave her everything I had. But I think at the time, I think it was just too much. Like, I think she needed a simple setup. You feel mm -hmm. me? And I gave her all you gave kinds her the of advanced, advanced stuff. Shit. Like, like she already was like two, three yeah. years in the game type stuff. Yeah, like she's just trying to, you know, she was editing shit off a of phone or whatever. And then I went to like, here, here's real cameras, here's real microphones, here's a Macintosh computer and oh, all of this shit. Her. Yeah, and so I think she was just like, man, fuck this shit. So she didn't really do nothing with it. So then. I just started actually getting more active in Beyond the Game on Facebook because, man, I was talking too much political shit, man. And I was arguing with niggas. Niggas was putting the white supremacy jacket on me because I'm a Republican. So it was just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might have made a, a couple niggas that I'm cool with hate me. Mm. So then I was just like, man, this shit ain't even really worth all of that. Niggas can feel how they feel, I can feel how I feel, and we can all get along perfectly. So I was just like, man, I just need to figure out something to do to leave this shit alone. So I just started getting active in your group real heavy. And I was just like, man, this shit's fun. Like, I ain't gotta worry about that other uh, bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then, whenever Ike had told me y'all was about to meet about doing shows, I was just like, man, I just wanna come and just be in the room and hear y'all niggas talk about it and shit. So then whenever I just started hearing y'all getting into it, you know, and coming up with your plan and shit, I was like, man, I gotta get back gotta in the game, into, man. Yeah. So, you know, I hit my little brother. He was a, uh, he was like, man, I'll create you a little intro and some shit like that. You know, I was having a whole bunch of conversations with you, and it was like a a, a little small group of dudes that was really like helping me, like, you know, get get back in the game right. if I needed some advice or if I needed somebody to teach me how to do this. You know. What I'm Say, all of y'all was kind of combined, just kind of like, you know, giving me some tutorials mm -hmm. until I got back in my own flow, man. And, and then it just turned into me doing my own shows. And I just wanted to just crank out as many as I can 
to just get like disciplined into doing it over yeah. and over and over mm-hmm. so that I wouldn't stop because normally that's what I do I get into some shit real heavy and then I'd be like man I'm cool off of this shit <laughs> so I was like man I just want to just create some kind of discipline some kind of willpower to just keep creating right so now man I'm you know I'm I've already published 62 episodes 62 of me yeah man I've been doing I think I dropped my first episode in September maybe so I'm just rolling with it, man. And, you know, at, at some point, I think when I get to my 100th episode, I'm going to start referring to myself as a podcaster. As a podcaster. So <laughs> when I meet niggas in real life, they can be like, what you do? I'm going to say, I'm a podcaster. You know so what I'm saying? For, for the person who wants to listen to sports and discourse for the first time, what would be the episode that you would recommend for them to listen to so they can get a real feel of what the podcast is about? What, what show would you recommend they listen to for the first one? Oh, man. Uh, I got some really good. I got I got a decent amount of episodes that I feel like was was done pretty good. Um, believe it or not, a whole lot of people might not really uh, think I'm telling y'all the truth. But the episode that I did with Shine Gurdon on the black quarterbacks is a real good episode. Um, I had a, a episode with my guy uh, Big A Anthony Richardson about uh, NILs. That's a pretty good episode. I think I had some good talks with you about North Carolina basketball, mm-hmm. some good episodes, you know what I'm saying? It's it's about four or five that I feel like are real strong, man. And um, the latest one I just dropped about Calipari, you know, that's my dog, but I had to go on and <laughs> I had to keep it 100, man. Like, he kind of letting a lot of the people down. So, you know what I'm saying? If you into that BBN shit, check that one out. Um but yeah, or you can just start from here on out, man. And start from here. So, you you talked about the Republican thing, right? Yeah. So, I'm not, I'm not the biggest into politics. I, I don't follow politics that closely. You know what I'm saying? I know Democrats, you know, re- Republicans, et cetera, et cetera. But you being a Republican, right? And you being a black man as a Republican, do you get a lot of pushback for that from that from from the black community? Do they think that you like a uh, Uncle Tom oh, or a sellout yeah. or oh, thing, things yeah. of that nature just because you, you're a black man affiliated with this political party. Nigga, hell yeah. Listen, at first I wasn't even off the Republican shit. I was like in the middle. I was like, I'm a libertarian. And what it all started from was I just love guns, keeping it 100 with you. Okay. So that's what really even got me starting to look at shit political because whenever I started getting into gun culture, I started realizing there was so many like people that was trying to like take gun rights away from people and all types of shit like that and then it just kind of went into you know i started like looking at some other political topics and shit and um the crazy thing is is that all of my political views when i try to explain them to people i explain them in a way that i feel like like i'll be like i think this is better for the black community or this view would help the black community this way, but niggas just don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, I'm going to just be honest with you. When they hear Republican, niggas is like... They automatically shut down and think... So when... when, when uh, I was about to say Tom Brady. When Donald Trump was in office, did people look at you like you voted for him? Yeah, I never voted for him neither one of the times. Hmm. The first time I didn't vote because... I All right, so this is how it went down, right? So that first election, it was Hillary and Donald. So that's like the worst possible candidates you could ever have in my opinion, right? right? So I was like, I know for a fact I'm not voting for Hillary. But I was like, am I gonna vote for Donald Trump? And it's like, if I have to choose, like if, if you just lay all the shit on the table and there's no candidate and you just say, do you like these views or these views? I like Republican views. Gotcha. And to be honest with you, I think most niggas live their lives conservatively. They don't really live liberal. They just vote liberal. Mm. But then when you put the candidates into it, then the shit gets funny because people people will say that you have the same ideology as this person because you align with the political views, right? Mm-hmm. So I think Donald Trump is a jackass, you know what I'm saying? But... He's affiliated like, with that party. Yeah, so. you know what I'm saying? So I was like, damn, am I going to vote for him or not? And I just chose not to vote. 
And I went to sleep thinking that Hillary Clinton was going to be the president. And I woke up and was just as confused as everybody else. I was like, what? Like, like for real. I, I was like, damn, this motherfucker actually won. And then it was just like, bro, the next four years was just crazy. Because everybody, like, it was just, he, he was always tweeting some shit and stirring up some shit. And then it just made it to the point where it just... Like it, it caused the soup like the biggest division in the country probably right. that I ever seen and like I even think a whole lot now like you can't even hardly talk sports and shit without certain things going crazy because mm-hmm. of like that division mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so it's like everybody was just like pick a side and it's like you either fucking with this liberal shit or you hate like you, you hate black people or you a coon and all mm-hmm. so it's just like bro it was like a lose lose. So, the second time, like, I definitely hated Joe Biden. So, I vote for the Libertarian candidate, which was Joe Jurgensen, right? <laughs> and a lot of people are like, oh, and then that's just like voting for Trump or whatever, however they want to look at it. Like, you wasted a vote or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't really want to vote for Trump, but I couldn't give it to Biden. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? I and I think, man, if most motherfuckers are keeping it real today, most people know they made a mistake with Biden, bro. Like, he's not the one. Even if you like the liberal shit, he ain't the one. Dog. He ain't it. He's not the guy, he's, man. He's not the guy. There, there's a better liberal politician than that motherfucker. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, it just got, like, to the point where, like, I just had to sit down and be like, bro, I'm not even for sure if, if motherfuckers really care that much or they just like arguing. I was I, that, that was about to be my next question with the whole politics and everything. With, with black people... There's a, I feel like there's a small part, pocket that actually pays attention to politics, know what's going on, know the policies that's, that's being put out there to possibly get passed, et cetera, et cetera. But then there's like 80% of, of the black community who just goes off of what the majority say, right? Yeah. So in your opinion, do you think a lot of the, the majority of black people who don't like Republicans only don't like them just based off of things they hear say and not so so much so forth of, well, I've never really took a look into their policies and their views and things of that nature. They just like, all the Republicans are associated with hating black people, so I don't like them without even taking the chance to even see what the Republican Party is all about. Do you feel like that's what black people do? Nigga, I used to do that. Okay. <laughs> like 100, dog. Okay. I mean, like, I voted for Barack Obama twice just straight because he was a nigga. (laughs) Period. That's it, dog. I didn't really care for none of the shit he was talking about, but I was like, man, I just want to see him get a shot because I just ain't never seen nobody else get one. So I was like, I'm going to rock with him. And then, I like, I had conversations with some people. I ain't going to say their name, but, like, um, they were just asking me some simple questions about, like, why I fuck with the liberal shit so heavy. And I was like, damn, I really don't got no logical answers for it. And that's what kind of made me be like, man, let me look and see what do I actually believe in for real. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, I started getting into the gun shit or whatever. And then I just started looking at some other shit. Like I was looking at like, you know, like government dependency. Like I think it hurts black people a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's necessary, right? Because there's so many poor black people that to a certain degree, like, we do need some government dependency programs. But I think niggas need to try to figure out how to get off of that shit. Because, like, if you look at most white people, right, most white people, like, my one of my best friends, probably my best friend, right, he was my my best man in my wedding. Like, he's the same age as me. He got three kids. He's married. He live in, like, a, well, I ain't gonna try and put his out, his business out there, but he live in, like, a several hundred thousand dollar crib okay Say no you know more. what i'm saying got a couple of whips in the okay. driveway okay you know what i'm saying he own like two or th- nah, i'm putting too much of his business <laughs> out he, there he, he's, he, he's, he's gonna good. watch him like, Hold on, he's bro. good he too much he's good right and if he pass away his kids is good hmm. like he got something he can actually give okay. to okay. him like not not just you know what i'm saying when most niggas die you just paying for the funeral Dead. you know what i'm saying So, I feel like as long as the majority, well, I don't even want to say the majority because that's unfair. Like, as long as there's a large portion of black people on government dependency, you can't really leave nothing to nobody. Mm. So, like, you can't give the next generation a little bit of an alley-oop, you know what I'm saying? Because you you don't have the ball to throw. You don't got the ball to throw, dog. 
So, you know, they just got to start from scratch just like you. But how how mm. how lovely would it be if, you know, God forbid, but just say, like, if you passed away but you had a million dollars in the bank, you had two or three cribs in your name, then at least you know if worse comes to worse, they can liquidate all your shit and give your kids some money. Yeah. So maybe that, you know, they can buy a crib or – at least have a nice car while they're in school or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Something that they don't got to work for. Like, yeah. cause like I done had to work for all the little bit of nothing that I got. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like I done had to get it off of myself. Get it out the mud. Yeah, get it out the mud. And, and real quick, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my baby mamas. Uh, that is hypothetical. I ain't got a million dollars in the bank. I ain't even got a couple thousand in the bank. So let's just make that make that clear before they come knocking at my door. <laughs> Talking about, uh, so uh, he said, no, nah, he ain't said shit. But, right. uh, <laughs> but let, let's switch the topic a little bit, man. Let's talk a little bit about life and love, right? You married, correct? Yeah. So how long you and your wife been together and how long have you and your wife been married? Uh, we got, we started seeing each other at the top of like 2018 and then we got married at the bottom of like 2020 right mm -hmm. and um, to be honest with you like I had just got to that point in my life where I was cool being single right I um, I was I was dating my daughter's mom off and on for a minute bro like 10 years yeah, you know we, know, we know how that go we, we all know how that go but it got to a point man where it just well, shit, it was probably about four of them was good, right? Mm -hmm. For about four of the years, I feel like she loved me, right? For the rest of them joints, bro, we was just helping each other raise kids to keep it 100. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't even smashing that much. I was, sleep there. I was sleeping on the couch most of the time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, you preach we the were, choir. We've we all were, been there, bro. Bro, I would walk in the crib sometimes. And we would never speak to each other. Mm -hmm. I would never touch her. Like, I'd be walking around her trying to get out of her way Wait, so you I wouldn't don't, touch her. So you her just don't rub up against her. You know yeah, what I'm saying? We've all been there, bro. <laughs> so it just wasn't no love in the crib. Like, it wasn't no toxic shit. Like, we wasn't – actually, we wasn't cheating on each other and shit. Just, it just wasn't nothing there. It wasn't nothing. It just wasn't like, nothing there. Wasn't no abuse or no type of crazy shit going on. It was just – Yeah, it was just strictly in the house – for the kids' sake, and that was pretty much it. Bro, it, it got so bad, right? Like, if, if she was sitting where you are and the remote was right there, and I was like, man, pass me the remote. She just wouldn't pass it to me. You feel me? <laughs> like, that's what type of time we was on, dog. So you'd have to reach over and grab, like, you feel me? Come like, on, just, that damn, just hand me the damn remote. That's just how it was, right? But, man, I, I'm going to tell you what it was. I just got so... That shit was just my normal life, so even though that shit was silly... Like, I was just staying there because that was just my normal life. Plus, I was still in the same crib with my child, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, like, I got a super strong relationship with her because she had a daughter before I met her. So, I got a super strong relationship with her daughter, you know what I'm saying? So, like, her daughter is like my daughter. Right. So, I, you know what I'm saying? I was living with them. It was cool. So, anyway, so, finally one day I was just like, all right, man. That's probably it, dog. Like, ain't no point of wasting any more of our time. We already done did a decade, man. It's like a prison sentence, you feel me? You don't put your beard in and did your time. You know what I'm saying? So uh, so I left, you know what I mean? And and the thing was, like, I had, I posted this on Ike's page whenever um, I was shouting him out for getting married. But, um, like, I had just switched over to Lextra and the work. Um but I took a massive pay cut, bro, mm. like 50%. Mm. Because in a couple of years, I was going to be making more than I was making. So you took a step back so you could take three steps forward. A big step back. Gotcha, okay. Right? So I had less money but more responsibility because now I got to pay for my own household on mm. top of I still got to, you know, yep. do my shit. Mm -hmm. I still got to contribute to so, my daughter's I got household. You. I you got know? you. I got you. You feel what I'm saying? So... Nigga, I was down bad, nigga. <laughs> you went, you preached to the But choir. I was happy because all the little bit of nothing that I had was mine. It was yours. You, you didn't have to work, walk on eggshells. You yeah. didn't have to, you know, had, bite your tongue. I had me a little apartment. Nigga, I only bought, like, two sets of dishes because I knew the only person I knew was going to be over was my daughter. So did I'm did like, you have an air mattress or a bed? Listen, at, <laughs> at first, I went to my dad's crib and I said, bro, 
using this food time. <laughs> he said, nah, I said, I'm taking this joint. He said, cool. So I took the food time. I used that shit like a couch. Used all purpose. I, bro, I didn't even have nothing in my bedroom but clothes. So the, the front room was pretty much the bedroom. It was my bedroom. Okay, say no more. So I just used my bedroom. I just put my clothes in the motherfucker, right? So my little brother hit me up. And my little brother's wild. Uh, if you ever get to meet him, you'll know. He was like, I got a nice air mattress. I spent like three, four hundred on it. He was like, you can even take hoes down on it. I said, let me get that joint. <laughs> let, me get, let me get that air mattress up at you. And I took a couple down on, on it. On the air mattress. Yeah. Okay. But it was nice. It was like about as big as this table, you feel me? Mm. It, was, it was nice. He, he really, I believe he, he spent, through. I believe he spent what he said on it, dog. Mm. Um, so let me ask you this real quick. Now, and I don't know if it's, it's this question I'm about to ask. I don't know if it's a, a, a guy question or if it's a black male question. But why do you think that there's such a, a negative perception of men getting married? Like, you know, whenever you, you tell somebody, say for the sake of argument, oh, man, I'm engaged. Oh, bro, don't do it. Oh, if, I, if you tell somebody, hey, yeah, man, I'm thinking about marriage. Oh, man, it's just, shh, bro, don't do that, bro. Don't stay single. Why do you think there's just this horrible perception of men getting married? Like I said, I don't know if it's just in the black community or if it's just a man thing, period. But why do you think there's such a bad perception of it? Like, keep it 100. Niggas like to have a bunch of hoes, dog. Say no more. Like, because <laughs> you, like, if you really going to do it right, gotta let all that shit go you know right. what i'm saying um but it's sometimes it's fun like to just have a bunch of hoes okay it's lonely right like there's times where you like like me and my wife love each other to death but we gonna get on each other's nerves at of some course. point so there's times where you be like man it would be nice if i just was by myself but then when you by yourself Sometimes you get lonely than a motherfucker, you know what I'm You're saying? Like, Damn, I wonder what she doing. Like, bro, when I was living by myself, I was lonely a lot. Mm. Because even if I had some hoes come through, they only gonna be there for a couple hours, and I don't even really know I care about them like that. So, like, they come, whatever goes down, and then they gone, then I'm lonely again, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I feel a, l- a little bit better, but... Shit, I, it's about 30 minutes for me, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't staying that long. You feel what I'm saying, so... You got one episode of Martin. You feel, you feel me, so... Then after that, it goes back to, you know what I'm saying, loneliness. So, you know, marriage is a good thing, but it is fun to have a bunch of hoes and to not have to be accountable for shit or not have to answer to nobody. Like, all of that shit is nice, too, to a degree. You know what I'm saying? Um, Was you you shaking in your boots when you proposed? Nah, man. Or you went into it confident, like, I know she's going to say yes. Yeah, man, okay. my, my wife had been on my head, bro. Like, my wife already knew, like, like real early into the first year that, like, she wanted to be my wife, like, quickly. And uh, she was mad as shit after that first year that I didn't propose to her. Like, mm. pissed off, man. And, um... Did, did she do it, like, in subtle ways, or she let it be known, like... Nah, my wife, my wife is a strong communicator, man. Like, um... Like, she didn't leave, like, little subtle hints around nah, that she house. Like, she, she, she pulled up on you. was like, bro, what are you doing? My wife don't do subtlety at all, man, which is good for my relationship. It's Sometimes in the middle of shit is bad, bro, because sometimes she's, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you just don't want to hear shit. You feel me? Like, I'm you, a horrible you be wanting to be like, man, shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? But it does help my relationship because I don't have to guess. Because I've been in a relationship where I thought I was in a positive relationship and the motherfucker was terrible, and then I got, like, the rug pulled out from under me. And I was like, oh, shit, we in a bad relationship. I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? You didn't say nothing to me, so I didn't know. So the good thing about my wife is, like, she ain't going to get mad at me and then go start talking to other niggas or, you know what I'm saying, be walking around on some secretive shit or shady. Mm -hmm. She's just going to be like, look, this is the problem that I have. Here's how you can fix it. It's up to you. And then I fix it, and then we good. You know what I'm saying? But she always bring it straight to me, dog. Like like I said, it's a gift and a curse, man, because I think it has held us together. And because we so transparent with each other, we don't never be having moments where we be feeling funny about each other. You know what I mean? Like, I let my wife do whatever the fuck she want to do. Like she like, trust her. Yeah. 
1,000%. Man, she's not cheating on me, bro. So, I mean, I would, I would bet the, the all the money I'm going to make for the rest of my life that a nigga with Bill Gates money can't fuck can't my get wife. Her. Can't, can't get her. Can't dog. get her, Um, So, I let her do whatever she want to do. And I'm cool with that because I just, like, I just know... Like, my wife used to tell me, like, man, if, if your legs stop working, I'll happily push you around in a wheelchair for the rest of it's your love, fucking boy. life. It's love, boy. You know what I'm saying? She's hella good to my daughter, hella good to my parents. You know what I'm saying? Like, she done took my daughter on vacation by herself. You know what I'm Without saying? Without you? Without me. You know what I'm saying? That's no shit. So, but, but see, here's the thing about my wife. My wife is a little bit older than me, and my wife comes from a traditional family. You feel me? Like, she, got, she came from a family where she's really cool with her dad. Mm. And her dad was the head of the household. So she got a respect level for men in the crib. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, like, my wife, uh, like I said, I don't want to put everybody's business out there, but my wife makes some good money. You feel me? Mm-hmm. She's an executive at a hospital. She got some paper, right? But she come home and serve me like I'm a king still. Like, I ain't done laundry since I known this woman. She cooked for me all the time. So she she still treats you even though she treat me like she seen somebody treat her dad. That's what I was gonna say. Like regardless of of the income coming in the house, when she gets home, you still head of the household regardless of the income. Absolutely. Okay. So let me ask you this: So, with like in relationships, especially marriages more so than than just a regular boyfriend girlfriend type shit, do you feel like a lot of relationships marriages fail? Because the man is too stubborn, too prideful, has too much ego to fix and correct the mistakes the woman is asking him to. Because he's thinking, I ain't doing shit wrong. Like, nah, yeah. she's just tripping, bro. So you think a lot of marriages fail because the man doesn't want to admit, all right, let me put my pride to this. I, I don't want to do this, but let me go ahead and do this to make her happy. Yeah, because a, a lot of the shit that women feel doesn't make sense. It be the dumbest shit, bro. And it's hard for men to understand how to communicate with women because niggas just be on logical shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if a game was on TV and me and you were sitting there and I said, hey, fam, can you give me a beer? And you said, yeah, nigga, wait till the commercial. I'm cool with that because that makes sense to me. Yeah, I ain't like, trying to Like, you don't want to get up, Yeah. so you got me when the commercial break. Yeah. I'm good. But if you say it to a woman, that means, oh, this nigga don't love me enough to stop what he's doing to go get me the beer. <laughs> So then a, a problem happens, you know what I'm saying? Because it's always about how you make them feel, bro. So it's not even about the action. It's how the action or lack thereof made them feel about it. And women are always insecure about how you feel about them. So you always got to, con- like, bro, I have to tell my wife, like, ten times every day that I love her. Dude, now, two, two questions real quick. First, the, when you t- bring out the beard thing, and the commercial come on when you go get she gonna be like, well, I don't want it now. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want it now. Yeah, because I already made her feel like like she's not important. Like she enough, like you know, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I, I got. It. But also, on the flip side of that, is it also up to the woman to be understanding and knowing? Okay, my man likes to watch sports. I'll wait until the commercial does come on, and then you know what I'm saying he can go get my beverage from or the wine or whatever the case she asks you to do. Do you think women also have to be understanding to? And knowing who her man is. Or does none of that shit even matter? I think they should, but they not. Mm. It just is what it is, dog. They just are how they are. They, they just, they just, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, we thinking logical. So when you ask me the question, logically, does it make sense for them to be understanding? It does. But are they? <laughs> nope. Um, it's just never going to not be that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So realistically, man... Unfortunately, you got to be like a master manipulator, not in a bad Ooh. way, but you have to manipulate your woman's emotions for in order for you to be in a happy relationship. Like I tell you, you the, sim- the, the simplest things, right? Like the reason why bitches be like, I don't know what I want to eat. They don't give a fuck, bro. They just want you to plan a date for them. They just want you to take charge. Yeah, man. You can take bitches anywhere. They're going to find something on the menu, dog. Chicken tenders and fries. Just tell the motherfucker, look, dog, put your clothes on. 
if you wear a weave, put your weave on. If you wear makeup, put your <laughs> shit on. And be ready at seven, we go in here. They're going to probably be like, all right, bet. But if you ask the motherfuckers where they want to go, then it just gets into all Back types of goofy and shit. And you so it's just like, been, yeah, yeah. just tell the motherfucker where, you, you know what I'm saying? You don't even got to tell the motherfucker where you're taking them. Just be like, hey, man, I'm taking you to eat. Be ready. Most of the time, they're going to be ready. If they like you. If they don't like you, then all I got of that some, shit goes. I ain't got no babysitter. I, ain't got, I got some yeah. dudes. I, my show's on right now. I can't all go. of that shit goes out the window if they don't like you. But I'm talking about like if they actually fucks with you. You know what I'm saying? So it's just always dumb shit like that. But that's the only way you can win, dog. You just got to be aware of the dumb shit. Be aware, be aware of the dumb shit. I, I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. Be aware of the dumb shit. Yeah, you got, you got to, man. And it don't even matter if they know that they being manipulated. Mm. I talk to my wife about it. Like, I watch YouTube videos and shit about mm. how to interact with women right in front of her. See, but see, that's the thing that you, you just hit on that a lot of dudes won't do, or if they do, they won't admit they do, which is they try to learn, okay, how can I love my wife? I love her, right? But I need to learn how to love my wife in a way that she knows that I love her instead of she just feeling like, oh, well, we're in a relationship, so I guess he loves me. So it's yeah. like, okay, let me, so that, that makes a lot of sense. Again, thinking logically. And man, look, here's the thing. Like, I'm not perfect, bro. So sometimes do I fuck this shit up? Yes, man. And when I fuck it up, bro, I'm gonna tell you what happens. I'm gonna tell you the difference. If my wife have an issue with me and I handle it correctly, shit will be over in 10 minutes and the motherfucker will be cooking me dinner, apologizing to me. But if I handle it wrong, I might have to call in work the next day because I've been up arguing till like four in the morning and gotta be at work at five. We've all been there too. You know what I'm saying? We've all been there. So if I don't swallow my pride and, mm. ma and manipulate her feelings, it's gonna end up being worse for me, dog. Mm. So sometimes it's just like, all right, man, let me just play the game the right way, and then I'm gonna get the W. I'm, my, and my wife will bring all the shit to me. She'll be like, here, here's your cigars, here's you some bourbon, just the way you like it, here's you some food. Like she'll bring it all to me. So why wouldn't I just do it like that? See, like the way you broke it down, it's like the shit is so simple. It really is, but but it's not. Though. I was gonna say it's simple, but it's not. It's like okay, and it goes back to what I was saying about a man being able to swallow his pride and ego and fix whatever issue she has. Now, how do you differentiate between her having an issue and her just nagging? Not saying that your wife is nagging, but I'm just saying in general in a marriage, how do you differentiate between this is something serious? Or she's just nagging and getting on my damn nerves. I think it all kind of plays into the same thing because, like, if I do everything the right way, my wife ain't going to nag me about nothing. Okay, that's fair. Like, she'll go out of her way to make sure I'm good and that, that she's not bothering me, you know what I'm saying, if I do shit the right way. Mm. But, my, but my wife expects things, you know what I'm saying, because she gives things, so, like, She'll just tell me, she'll be like, fam, you ain't took me to brunch in like two weeks. Do you still love me? Mm. And that sounds hella stupid. You know to to us, it does. But to, to them, it's like you said, her feelings, right? So, but go ahead. Because now there's an expectation that that's how I show her that I love her. So, like, now she's looking for that. So, I take the bitch to brunch. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I do. Like, put your clothes on. I'll take you. Gotcha. You know okay. Saying? Then she happy. <sighs> Boy, man, I got a lot to learn. I'm, I'm going to get there one day. I ain't never been married. Um, right. been, I've been proposed to once. I've been proposed to once. That's dope, though. I turned it down, though, but obviously. But, yeah, I was uh, I was in, in school up in Ohio. Me and this chick was, you know, talking back and forth before I left or whatever. And I came I came home on uh, for, for winter break. And I was here for, like, maybe two days. It wasn't even that long for real. Pretty, pretty much a weekend. And, you know, we linked up or whatever. And I, she was like, where you going to be? I was like, I'm at my mom's house. She was like, all right, cool. I'm going to swing through. I'll let you. So I was like, all right, bet. So she swung through. She was like, you know, you want? So she came in the crib with that. My mom's was there. So, you know, we in there chilling in the living room. Next thing you know, she get up. My mom come through. She get up. She's like, uh, Miss Phyllis, I just want to let you know you have a wonderful son. Woo, woo, woo. And I would love to marry your son. And I'm like, what? What? Wait a, wait a minute, bro. What is going on here? And, uh, yeah, she ended up with Man, it's so crazy. This conversation with cues, a free space, no judgment zone. That that girl that I'm talking about, she had a son, not mine, just for the record. 
she loved me so much, she gave her son my middle name, even though we never, 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 like we wasn't even like, we wasn't even like at that point to where we could get married. You see what I'm saying? But she had so much love for me that she gave her son my middle name. Damn. I know, bro. And then you wouldn't even marry. I wouldn't even marry. <laughs> I wouldn't even marry. Nah, but but listen, this is one thing I'm going to say, man. And this is no disrespect to anybody that's ever done this or the young lady that you're talking about. But I feel like in my wife, the way we rock, there's gender roles, bro. And like... She ain't. She would have never proposed never to me, yeah. but she would cuss me out for not proposing Post. to her. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna do it, but motherfucker, you better. Yeah, you better do it. And and I just feel like, you know, like like I see a lot of time on social media where niggas be like, man, it's 2022, bitches need to start shooting their shot, whatever, whatever. And I just don't really agree with that, dog. Like that's just not really how it's supposed to go down. Like you supposed to go get the woman you want. You know what I'm saying? You ain't supposed to sit around. If you sit around and wait for bitches to come to you, then you might, some niggas might got it like that. You might be a, a type of nigga that all the bitches love or whatever, and they might, you know, some yeah. some niggas get more hoes than others. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just, just, it, it is, is what, what it is. It is. is you know what, what it saying? is. Uh, and maybe that might work for you, but like real niggas just go get the bitch that they want. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. you got to just be above the rest of the niggas and go get the one you want. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm. That's just kind of how I that's feel about how, it. You okay. know what I'm saying? But like I said, I ain't disrespecting nobody. Or You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be a sucker to nobody that may feel otherwise or women that might have done what you know what she's talking about. I just don't feel like, the, you know what I'm saying? The man should. That's, that's one thing that you feel like a man should do. You know, taking out the trash, okay, yeah, whatever. Washing dishes, yeah, whatever. But this, you feel like a man should step up and take and propose maybe I'm gonna do it one day I got my I've given myself three years Th three years but anyways let's switch it over to a little bit of sports and discourse action we're gonna talk about some cigars I want to get into the bourbons that you drank but before we do all of that what is the current state of the UK Wildcats I mean y'all just came off of a loss to St. Peter's Peacocks what was the last weekend or whatever the case may be nine win season a season before that um, the pandemic kind of, you know, canceled the, the season before that. And then, so the last time y'all had a decent season was tw 2019 as far as postseason play is concerned. Yeah. Now we fast forward to 2022. You got BBN fighting with each other about Coach Cal. You got people arguing about jerk checkers on the jerseys and carrying on. You being a big, huge UK fan, and you mentioned earlier that you did a show uh, talking about Coach Cal and everything like that. What's the temperature of BBN right now? It's probably the most. I say, for everything as a whole, it's probably the most confusion I've seen in a minute, man. Mm. Um, because it's just so many different feelings about different things, like, and all of it's valid for real. Like, shit does feel a little different than in 2010 when Cal first came. Like, when I first found out we was getting Cal, he already had Wall and Blesso in Memphis. He had Xavier Henry, but Xavier Henry made the mistake oh, of going to Kansas. Kansas. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, he should have stayed, man. If y'all had Xavier, y'all probably would have won a title that year because he was the shooter that y'all needed. But anyways, go ahead. And he was big than a motherfucker. He was like 6'5". I remember. He could and, jump out the gym. I, and I the remember. thing, and here's the thing, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Calipari's system does end up somehow a lot of his players develop quicker when they get to the pros than other. Like, if you look at all the boys that play for, for Bill Self, how many of his McDonald's All-Americans really show up in the league? So we got Embiid, of course. Andrew Wiggins. Wiggins. That's all I can think of off top of my head. Was Mario Chalmers a uh, McDonald's All-American? I'm not sure about Mario Nah, Chalmers. I think he might have been. He was like player of the year in Alaska or some shit like that, though. He was legit. Yeah, but, but he wasn't play. Yeah, he wasn't. Um, now, Wiggins and Embiid is the only two I can really think of. Was, but, what, what about the Morris Twins? Were they McDonald's All-Americans? Fuck, I don't know. But the only two that really stand out is Embiid and Wiggins. As and, like, he had some, some powerhouses like uh, shit. The year that we got Deron Lamb, we was trying to get Josh Shelby. I remember and that. He and, I don't even know if he got drafted or not. Did Josh Shelby? Damn. 
That's a great question. And you know, like I said, Xavier flamed out quick. Mm-hmm. I think he even transferred from Kansas. Actually, after sophomore junior year, I think he transferred. Now, Xavier went in that same draft with Wilding. Oh, uh, did he? Okay. Yeah. Okay. He just didn't get it popping in the pros, man. So, like, I, I got to give Calipari some credit because he, as of all the niggas he done put in the league, he only got about five. Flame outs. Yeah. Like, there was a couple of niggas like James Young flamed out. Archie Goodwin. Archie Good, but but even Archie Goodwin did he put up thirty a couple of times in the league, but he just he was just missing something that where he just couldn't maintain. He couldn't the shit. find his niche. He couldn't find his lane. Yeah, I think it was because he was in a, like a tweener situation. Like he was like a a shooting guard, but like trying to play point guard and he yeah like he, like he he wasn't good enough as a distributor to be a point guard, but not a great enough shooter to be a two guard. So he was like caught in the middle to yeah, you know, yeah they couldn't find what, what yeah, to do with him. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, who would T? I, I would put even though T played in the playoffs a little bit, but what? I would I would consider him sort of a flame Marcus out. T, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a few dudes like that. Um, Deron and, Lamb. No, was that? Was was he? Man, here's the thing about Lamb. Dog. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I never really felt like Lamb had a high ceiling in the pros. I felt like he was already maxed out at Kentucky. Mm. Now. You don't think he could have been a J.J. Redick in the NBA? Man, it's I don't know. Look, I seen the – I watched – because, see, some of them niggas, I, I watched them in the G League, and it sucks because they way better than G League. But they're not good enough for the NBA. So, the, like, again. Like, like Terrence Jones. Okay. Terrence Jones can get 30 in the G League like it ain't shit. Like, he, he can do he it. He can sleep in 30 the, in the yeah, G League. Yeah, man. But the nigga just can't find a spot in the league. Because he's, he's another tweener. Too small for power forward, but not enough shooting and ball handling to be a small forward. So, like, what do, you, what do you do with him? Yeah. Like, he's like a – he he like he had game kind of like Julius Randle, but just for some reason Randle just is better somehow. Like, But I feel like their skill set is damn near the same. You know what I mean? But Damn near the same body and, type and, and shit. everything. Jones might have been a better defender for real. And he's more athletic than than Julius Randle. So I don't know what happened with that situation. Man. But overall, you know, most of Cal's dudes find some sort of success, right? Compared to most of the other coaches. Like, the only one that I would say probably got that type of NBA uh, cachet is when Billy Donovan was at Florida, he popped off a lot of, like, decent, yeah. like, recruits that went to the league and, mm-hmm. and actually ended up having some so. success, you know what I'm saying? He had a couple of flameouts, too, but he put a lot of niggas in the league. They mm-hmm. had some solid careers. Um, he probably the next best. But even with all that being said, it's only really translated to one championship for Kentucky – Four Final Fours. But the sad part about it is, man, that's really good for 12 years. Except for I was gonna say, in Kentucky, I was gonna man. Say Syracuse, that's great. Georgetown, great. Florida, great. Even Louisville, that's great. Man, look, this is what I always be trying to tell niggas. Kentucky basketball is 100 years old, dog. And we only got eight championships. I don't know why niggas think that we supposed to win every, every single, single year. year. <laughs> like, the way these niggas act, bro, you would think that we got 30 and we try and get to, like, 35 or some like shit. Y'all, y'all like y'all the Boston Celtics or something, like, yeah, got 17 man. chips? I mean, like, do we got more than everybody else except for, like, UCLA? Yeah, but, damn, it's only eight, man. So, like, if you really break it down, if we got eight in 100 years, you know, one every 15, 20 years is kind of all right. Mm, okay, I see what you're saying. When you In my down, opinion. Okay, I see what you're saying. Especially, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Tubby got one, but he never went to the Final Four again, which is what I think made people start to look at him funny. Cal has gone back to the Final Four several times. He just fucked it up, you know what I'm saying? He, he fucked up a couple of squads. Though. That's, that's the, the thing that makes what him look was, bad. What was the 38 and one? Was that 2017? The Devin Booker, Carl Anthony Towns. The uh, I think it was the, the year when Duke them won, wasn't the, it? The, yeah, because they got beat. Uh, Duke beat Wisconsin, which Wisconsin beat y'all, but I just couldn't remember what year that 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 uh, undefeated season was. I can't remember what year it was either. But, but that was the pl- platoon, the platoon yeah. year, yeah. And the sad part about it is, like, everybody in that motherfucking team except for maybe Dominique Hawkins touched NBA money. Damn, you're right. 
he got a, a tryout with the say, fucking Dallas Cowboys. I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But every like he got damn near everybody's a little bit of money. You know what I'm saying? Like some of them niggas didn't really get like big like Derek Willis. Was he on that squad? I think he might have been, but like he ain't get no good money. But he got like a little deal with the Pistons for he, he might have made yeah. a million or two. But a lot of them niggas had an opportunity. And another one that you could almost say is a flame out too, uh, Trey Lyles. Yeah, I, maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't call him a flame out, but disappointing. Maybe, yeah, he under, didn't be expectation. Uh, underachiever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all of them niggas got an opportunity though. You know what I'm saying? Um, how, how does BBN feel about Cal right now? Man, I think it's half and half. It's a strong half and half, man. Or it might even be a 60-40 negative. 60, negative, 40, 40 with Cal. What, what's the negative? Like, where, where's the negative feedback? What are people saying? Like, what do you think people See, want, a lot want of, Cal to do? A lot of motherfuckers are upset because, unfortunately, they miss the days where niggas grow up caring about the school. Which that you can cancel that shit. Like, look, like, all right, I'm gonna keep it real with you, right? Back when I had some hoop dreams, right before I ended up realizing that I was trash, right? <laughs> my daddy would have had love to see me play at Kentucky, right? I would have, nigga, I would have went through all of the little shit. I would have put all the little hats on the table in front of it, like yeah, the I was, whole thing. But nigga, I'm going to you Kentucky, are, but dog. you know you're going to Kentucky. I would have even fucked. I would have fucked with Duke, Louisville, Tennessee. I would have let all of them motherfuckers. I would have led all of them on. I would have made them all think I was coming just to shit on them. Just, just, I'm going to Just Kentucky. to waste their time. And my daddy would have loved to see me play in Rupp Arena, right? But that's because I'm homegrown. But these new niggas don't give a fuck about Kentucky. So just, I mean, I hate to say it. They don't, dog. They, they don't They don't. These give. niggas don't grow up going, man, I just want to play for Big Blue Nation. They don't give a fuck about none of that shit, bro. They want to play for Cal because Cal turns – these niggas into like hundred million dollar niggas you know what i'm saying so they might and i'm not i'm not trying to act like they don't fuck with kentucky like i think once they hear it's in their blood like yeah. i think they take pride in it they don't they don't they just don't go to the school for the tradition of they don't give man most of these niggas don't give a fuck about that shit bro first of all most of them don't even know the tradition of the schools that they're going to they don't know. They don't know, like, you know, Jamal Mashburn, Ron Mercer, and, you know, Derek Anderson, um, Sean Woods. Like, they don't know the lineage and, you know, Rex Chapman and all. They don't. Man, hell not. They know Wild Bledsoe and them went yeah. there. They know that. They know a few niggas that played recently. Yeah, they know yeah. that. But to go back to the to the Rick Patino squad of Tony Delp, Walter McCarty, all of these guys, you know, y'all went to the Final Four with 96, 97, 98, winning yeah. in 96. Like, they. They don't care about none of that. Don't give a fuck. They, uh, it, it means nothing. And and, and that's and, and just for the record, that's not just the UK. That's at all blue blood schools now. Like it, not, they not going to they not nothing, going bro. to Duke because Elton Brand went there and Corey McGetty and Christian Leitner and all. They they going there because Coach K can get me to the league. When Zion said I want to be a part of the Duke Brotherhood, I said niggas stop, dog. You don't give a fuck don't about, don't about no Duke Brotherhood, you don't care about nigga. No Duke brother. But I ain't mad at you for going to Duke because. Coach K got that same type of vibe. Like, you know if you play for Duke, you're going to be on TV. You all, you're all already going to get that pass for being coached well and being good like you do at Kentucky. Right. You're going to get an opportunity to, to go to the league. Because Coach K is going to get you an opportunity. Just, just yeah, man. That by you're going to win a lot of games at Duke. Yeah. You're going to look like something. Some of these niggas, they can hide. Like, Calipari snuck some niggas into the league that shouldn't have went. Of course. You know what I'm saying? And same with Coach K. Like, he done snuck a few in there. And like, you because, know. because Duke and the Coach K name, people going to say, okay, well, you know, he, 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 knows how to, he knows how to play basketball. And I think no, – well, I ain't going to get started on my targets. But anyway, that's neither there nor there. But so you think people want Cal out of here? Some of them do because some of them still believe in that tradition, man. But it just ain't there. Some they always be like, I want four year players so I can get to know them, and I'm like, that can work against you, but it maybe because look, man, let's just be honest. When Tubby was here, we had all the four year players a motherfucker could ask for. Chuck Hayes and, we, and all that. Yep. And they they Kentucky legends. Right. But we got one championship out them niggas. Yeah. Yeah. But them niggas is legends. Like Chuck Hayes is a legend. Tayshawn Prince is a motherfucking look, legend, legend, nigga. Yeah. Like, we got a few of them joints. So, basically, what you're saying is that either way works, but 
would you rather have the three to four year guy or would you rather have the one and done? Because I, I kind of feel like once y'all won it in 2012, people are like, oh, well, this is going to be almost every other year. We can get these one and done top yeah. players in the nation and come to here. We're going to compete. every." And now we fast forward, what, See, 10 years from that, and, and now Big Blue Nation's like, well, I don't know. I'm tired of this one and done. See, here's the thing about it, right? The problem is, yes, these niggas are the most talented niggas in college. Yes, they have the biggest ceiling, which is why they go highest in the draft. But it don't mean these niggas is the best basketball players in college. Like, Frank Mason was ranked 80th in high school. Mason, Frank Mason, Kansas, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Player of the year. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was ranked 80th. He goes to Kansas. He develops. He played against Fox. Fuck Fox up. In college. <laughs> Fox goes like fifth in the draft and starts over him in the NBA. And I don't even know if Frank Mason is still in that motherfucker. In league either. You know what I'm saying? But that year when Fox was a freshman, he couldn't play with that boy in the beginning of the year. Now, towards the end of the year, Fox might have figured some shit out. He might have been able to be on the same level. But for that season, nobody was really fucking with that guy. So it just kind of... It just depends because you can get some niggas that might be ranked a little bit lower that end up being some hell of a ball players. You know what I'm saying? But it don't necessarily, like, Shigari Aleem was ranked 73rd or some shit like that or 80th. No, so sometimes it don't work out. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it don't. It just depends, man. Like, so it's no real, like, it's no real way for me to say that I would rather take some lower ranked players because... I just like niggas that's talented off the rip. Yeah. Like, I feel like a nigga that has more natural ability, you can give him some advice or some teach him a little couple things here and there. Like, I think Towns was ranked, like, seventh or some shit when he was in high school, which is low now. If you look at his class, like, if they re-rank it, he can't be no, no worse work. than two or three, hmm. but probably going to be one, right? Yeah. I was thinking about a guy. I was thinking about Scal. But then, yeah. Yeah. Man, and, and, you, and believe it or not, just because I just mentioned uh, Towns, there's a video you can watch on YouTube of Scal fucking Towns up in high school, man. So, so some of these guys peak too early. They, they peak in high school, and then what do, do you want Cal gone? Because my thing is, nah. if you want him gone, who? who, who, who? Because there's no young up-and-comer to where you like, okay, yeah, he's, he's the next it guy. And then, of course... Like you mentioned on your show, Sports of Discourse, Jim Boeheim, old Coach K's gone after this season. Like the 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 quote unquote dinosaur coaches are pretty much phasing out of the game. The guys, the the coaches that we grew up idolizing, the Tom Izzo's and all of that, the the, the legend people, coach, the people that you think should have a Kentucky job, yeah, are pretty much on their way out. Yeah. And there's nobody up and coming to where you'd be like, like Cal, for instance, when he came back. That's the guy right there. Yeah. There's no that's the guy no more. So what? there's nothing UK can really do at this See, point. See, somebody threw a name out at me, but I don't know if it's fool's gold or not, right? And that's Brad Stevens. Because, see, if you look at Brad Stevens, right? It would work. This is what I'm saying. This is why I don't know if it's fool's gold, right? He did the most amazing thing besides win championships in college. He took a mid-major to the championship Back to, to back. back twice, but yeah. that nigga had pro talent on that motherfucker. Yeah, Gordon Haywood, Shelvin Mack, obviously. There was one more guy on the, there. The forward, the white yeah, kid. Yeah. He yeah. was a hair away from being pro, pro talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he had three niggas on his squad that could damn near play in the NBA. Yeah, NBA talent. So I don't know if he's really a hell of a coach or he just ended up lucking his way into a hell of a squad. But if you got, think about it, bro. If you starting three niggas that got NBA talent. Especially in a mid-major, you fucking mid-major schools up. Right. Then you snuck up on the big boys because they didn't know you had that. They didn't know you had Hayward and motherfucking Shelvin yeah. over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They might have heard about them niggas on ESPN or something, but they really didn't know what them niggas could really do. You right. know what I'm saying? And they got them into the championship game. So I don't know, is he really a hell of a coach? Because he had some moments in Boston where he looked like but then Boston kind of just been dysfunctional too a little bit, so I'm like, mm. hmm. That's interesting that you say Brad Stevens. I, what didn't he flirt with coming to UK when when uh, 
the rumors of him stepping down last season, well, after last season, there were rumors circulating. It was Indiana, my bad. It was Indiana, not UK. My bad, my bad. But uh, before we wrap it up, two quick things, man. The first one is, what kind of bourbon do you like to drink? And how do you differentiate between what's a good bourbon? Because I know you're a heavy bourbon drinker. So how do you know, what do you look for to qualify if it's a good bourbon or if it's trash? Because a lot of people just drink to be drinking, which ain't nothing wrong with that. But if you're trying to drink for the taste of it, how do you know what's a good bourbon and what's a bad one? Man, you know, the funny thing about that is to me, it's just personal preference because I drink it all, dog. Like, I got some bottles on my table that, you know what I'm saying, we paid like $500 for. Woo! Woo I probably got like six bottles on my table Woo. that we paid like 500 for, you know what I'm saying? You get these out of the country or, you know, in Kentucky or? Nah, we, uh, we get all our shit in Kentucky, but sometimes you got to pay more than it's really worth. You just got to pay for it. Like, if you want, like, like we drank a 12-year pappy at our wedding. We paid for it. You feel me? Hold on. I won't, I won't go back to this $500 bottle. What makes this damn bourbon that's 500 What makes this bourbon $500 when I can go to it, a total wine and get something for 30 It's not worth it. It's just exclusivity. It's the, so I can hold it up in my wedding picture. Is that, so that's you what just, I pay for. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, nigga, it's I got some the, exclusive We got the stuff. picture, nigga, like. And we, you feel me? Yeah. Now it's good, but it ain't worth five hundred dollars. None I, of that shit is worth more than forty dollars. That, and that's what I'm saying. Like, what what makes this 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 bourbon right, five hundred dollars? So, so let me explain it to you, right? I drank bottom shelf bourbon all the way up to the highest, right. most expensive shit. But what what sets the market is right. So most bourbons. Young bourbons are like two to four years old, right? But then, like, you get some that go all the way up into the 20s, right? So the ones that are in the 20s cost more because the process of making it is longer, right? Okay. So if you got a 20-year bourbon, Buffalo Trace had to put it in the Rick House for all of them 20 years or them four seasons for 20 years. Right, right. And then what happens is the barrel soaks up some of the, the whiskey, right? And so whenever you, like, take the barrel and bottle it up, you don't got as much whiskey in it because some of that shit evaporates. Yeah. So now they lost money, technically. Mm. So now you got to pay because they can't get 300 bottles out of this bourbon. They might can only get, like, 70 or 80. So you pay for it because of that, right? But taste-wise, the older bourbon just tastes a little bit more oaky because you got the wood in it. And see, like, for it to be bourbon, it has to be, like, barreled in a brand new, it has to be a brand new oak barrel. And they have different levels of, of char, right? So there's, like, I think one, two, five char, right? And different companies use different char levels, which is where they burn the wood that's on the inside of it, right? And um, so then, you know what I'm saying, when they store the shit, if it's young bourbon, you can get more bottles out of it. And that's like your bottom shelves that make big batches of the yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? So it just kind of like, it's kind of like a preference thing. But to be honest, just to be completely honest, none of that shit is worth a lot of money, bro. Like it just depends on do you want it or not. Like like um, when me and my wife did our engagement pictures, we, uh, we used a bottle of Elijah Craig 18 year, right? And I think we paid like 300 for that bottle. But the reason why we used it was because, like, um, my, when I first met my wife, she loves chicken wings, right? So she used to live in Richmond. So she was like, I got to take you to this spot where they got some cold chicken wings. So when we ended up going to the spot, they had, like, a crazy bourbon selection because Richmond is just a college town. Mm. So they just trying to get fucked and up. And that's why I said, yeah, some people just drink just to be but, drinking. But the dude that owns it, like, like I'm hella cool with the dude that owns it now. Like, me and my brothers and shit, like, he, like he fucks with us heavy right. when we go in there. But he told me that he's the number one seller of Buffalo Trace in the state. 
So they give him all kinds of like legitimate bottles. Mm. So the first time she took me there, I was like, damn, they got all of this on the menu and it wasn't even that expensive. So I tried all of these different flights, right? So you know what a flight is where they like, they give you like, a, like usually it's like three to five samples or some shit, So right? basically almost like wine tasting type of thing. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Right, so I did my little flight and I was trying all of the ones that I know I would never be able to buy mm. and afford, right? So I'm just happy. So my wife is just watching me. Like, so now she's happy because I'm happy. She's watching me like drink all of these bourbons. So now like, that's like the memory, like the first time she feel like she really made me happy. Mm. So now it's just the, the bourbon is connected to my marriage. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. So like, it's worth it because of the memory, not because of the juice. juice. Now, now the juice is good, but but it's, it's more so the memory that okay. So if if I'm if I'm tasting wine, I mean not wine, my bad. Bourbon, what am I supposed to be tasting? Well, bourbon is kind of sweet, man, and there's different levels to it, right? So to be bourbon, it has to be 50, at least fifty one percent corn, right? So usually bourbon is made from like corn, uh, like. And some other types of like, like sometimes they put weed in it. Mm. They do rye. I ain't they never do, heard of weed in it though. But go ahead though. That sounds good. That sounds tasty. No wheat. Oh wheat, my bad. Yeah, not, <laughs> not weed. <laughs> wheat. <laughs> rye or like barley or whatever. But the in order for it to be labeled bourbon, it has to be at least fifty one percent corn. Now you can go all the way up. And then I think once you get to a certain level, like if you go over 70% corn or maybe it's 80%, then they just call it corn whiskey. Mm -hmm. But if it's below 51, it's just like whiskey. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you so you want the one that has more corn or you want the one that has, what you say, 50, 50%? 51% 50%. corn for it to be bourbon minimum. Okay. But then, you know, different companies use different recipes. So one company might have fifty four percent corn. One, oh, okay. One so the corn is what differentiates between whiskey and bourbon, right? Okay, okay, okay. So okay, it's okay. got to be fifty one percent at least, or it's not even bourbon. It's just whiskey. But it, once it goes over fifty one, you can consider it bourbon, and then they just level it out. However, they you know they all got their recipes and shit or whatever. Okay. So they make it however they make it. Okay. Like certain ones, like um, like Wild Turkey and Four Roses, they have uh. A really high percentage of rye in their shit, so it still have fifty one percent bourbon, but they might throw more rye in it than the average company does. Because it's the I'm recipe. Saying? Yeah. Okay, I got you. Same thing for cigars, because you're an avid cigar smoker. Yeah. So I don't smoke cigars, but if I was to smoke a cigar, if I go to to, to a cigar bar, I ain't shout nobody cigar bar because ain't nobody paying me for it. Ain't, ain't no advertisement. But if I was to go to a cigar bar. What would I need to look for as far as what to smoke? And how do you even smoke a cigar? Because some people say you're supposed to inhale it. Some people say you're just supposed to smoke it just for the ambiance and everything like that. So two-part question. How do you smoke it? And what do you look for when you're choosing a cigar to smoke? All right. So cigars is kind of like the same way as bourbon. There's like levels to it. So they go from like, you might have some that's one ninety nine, and then on up. Of course, right, because they get pretty expensive, yeah. Yeah, like average, like a, a average quality cigar is around like 8 to $10. That ain't bad. You know what I'm saying? Except for like a nigga like me that smokes that's one every lot, That's day. what I'm saying, you like if, I'm saying? if you're not smoking one every day, 8 to $10, that's not nothing. Yeah, that's, so, okay, so here's the thing, right? The cheaper ones, they usually are constructed poorly, right? So they might burn uneven. They might look a little like funny. Like yeah. the, they might be wrapped and have like veins in them and like raises in I the wrap. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they just look fucked up. So you might, you, you will, I guess I'll say you will make a compromise, right? Like, okay, I'm not going to spend a lot of money, but the experience is probably not going to be as good. But it still might be okay. It just might not be as good, right? Mm -hmm. But when you play for like top-notch quality, you get more consistent flavoring. Um, construction is on point. Burns even like you know how niggas will take the pictures and the ash would be this long because yeah. it's real hard and compact. Pause. So, um, but that's just like kind of what you pay for, right? So, 
there's different types of tobaccos, right? They have like, um, the overwhelming part of it is like, so there's like a wrapper and that's the outside part. Then there's a binder up underneath that, then there's filler and that's what makes the cigar, right? But it's all tobacco leaves. It's just like, like some company might be like, oh, we get our wrapper from Nicaragua and it's a Maduro flavor wrapper. And then we put Dominican binder underneath it. And then we have like a fucking uh, Cameroon filler leaves mm. or some shit. So it's, it's kind of confusing at first and it's overwhelming because you go in and there's so much shit to choose yeah, from. Yeah. I was helping this little nigga out the other day uh, that was in Total Wine because he was just now starting. And like he, see, here's the thing. When you first start, sometimes the the flavors are too strong, right? And usually the lighter colored cigars are Connecticut and then it goes all the way to dark, which ones are called Maduro, right? And the Maduros are more like full strength. So like I would suggest if you're just starting out, go with a lighter shaded cigar, right? And they pair well with like coffee and shit like that. Or, you, or they have some that's even flavored, right? So they'll have like a sweet flavor or some like dipped in uh, bourbon or coffee, you know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. You can start off with those until you develop your own like sense of taste. Um, but when you smoking it, one thing to remember is, right? So you don't light them with regular cigars or with regular lighters. You usually use a torch with butane or use a match. Matches are the best, really, because, like, especially cedar matches, because it's, like, a lot of times people store their cigars in, like, cedar chest or whatever, and it kind of gives it a little flavor or whatever. Um, but I prefer to use cedar matches whenever I can and then torch it second. Um, but you have to... It's kind of like an art to smoking it because you want to light it and get it hot, but not too hot because the tobacco oils will burn too fast and it'll taste nasty and it'll have like tar coming out of it and shit like it just looks it looks gross and it tastes gross mm. so you want to just basically hit it just enough to where like it stays lit and it's cool and then you get to taste more of it like I made a joke about it because you know I, I have to troll LeBron but like when he won his championship he was just like <laughs> <laughs> and I was like see man Michael Jordan does it the right way this you know what I'm saying he never do off, it like that <laughs> yeah I was off some bullshit but 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 actually what I was saying is true though like you gotta like pace yourself with it it's supposed to be like a journey like it usually takes me like an hour and a half so like I always give myself Damn. some time and that's why some niggas smoke cheap cigars because like it we were standing out in the parking lot. I might we we smoke a cheap one while I'm talking, and then my wife might hit me and be like, "Hey, your dinner's ready, son." I'm like, "All right, fuck it, cool." So I just throw it away. I don't give a fuck because I only paid a dollar. But if I pay like twenty five dollars, nigga, I got to smoke the whole thing. Like I can't. You, oh, you don't ask it. You you just go ahead and finish See, it. Off. And that's the thing too. Like when you start smoking a cigar, see, like you have to keep them at a certain humidity, right? Mm. Oh, so that's why they have them in, the, in them rooms. Got you. Okay. Right. So once you, like, put it... And see, like, Kentucky has really, like... It's really dry. So it has low humidity. So it will change, like, the flavor profile of your cigar. So when you open it, you got to pretty much smoke it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And especially if you, like, burn... Like, put it out and smash the ashes. If I ever do like leave a cigar setting for a little bit if I come back like I will cut the, the tip off of it and start with the fresh tobacco and it still will taste a little bit gross but I could probably you can maybe it, you I can, can get through it yeah. yeah but if not man it's gonna be terrible so that's why some people smoke cheap ones cause they just do a little bit of whatever like some niggas might walk their dog and smoke a cheap one while they walking their dog and after they dog shit they going back to the crib they throw it away you know what I'm saying yeah no big deal. But like I said, if I, if I pay like $20, man, I got to smoke the whole thing. Like, I'm smoking it till my finger starts to burn. I was going to say, $20, yeah, we're going to you know ride this saying? thing out. I don't, I don't care like, what I got to do. Like, I got like about seven or eight real Cubans, and every, like my anniversary or my birthday or something, I might smoke one. I smoke it till like, it's like my fingers are burning. Yeah, I like yeah. the motherfuckers like this big, and it's burning my fingers, and then I finally throw it away. Because I just don't, like, you can't get them in the country. Unless you got like a plug, what what does it do for you though? Smoking a cigar, like obviously you know, 
c- cigarettes, we give you a different type of feeling. But what what does a cigar do for you? It's more just of a mental thing, honestly. Like you can taste different flavors in the tobaccos, uh, but it's more of just like a mental thing. It's like a it's kind of like just like a vibe, if you will. Like I know people overuse the fuck out of vibe, but it's that's kind of like how I would describe it. Like if you just chilling out and you want to relax, smoke a cigar. Like if I'm playing golf with some niggas, smoke a cigar. You know what I'm saying? Like gotcha. if we was at the cribs playing poker or some shit, I smoke, smoke a cigar. You know what I'm saying? It's just like some chill shit. Like just some some manly chill type of shit. It, but a lot of women smoke cigars. Like, I'm in, like, a, a black cigar group, and a whole lot of women smoke cigars, too. Didn't know that. Um, and every once in a while, if I go out to the the cigar bar that we're not going to name, uh, it'd be a lot of women in there. Mm, chilling, smoking. Yeah. Know, having a good time. So, the cigar bar that we're not going to name, you want to, you know, advertise in space, you know what I'm saying? Hit me up. We can get you a plug in here. We'll smoke a cigar while we're on the show. But Derek Stevenson, let the people know where they can find Sports and Discourse. Uh, let the people know about what you got going on in future episodes, how they can get a hold of you in case, because you know you always got guests on your show. Yeah. So, let them know how they can come be a guest and all that good stuff. Yeah, man. So, uh, Sports and Discourse, my main uh, distribution channel is YouTube. Uh, because I can throw the video content on her or whatever. Uh, but I def- definitely have it on podcasting sites. I got it on Anchor. I got it on Spotify. And, of course, I got it on Apple Podcasts, right? And you can find find me on all those platforms. Um, and I'm going to try to start uh, posting more clips just on, like, Facebook and different things like that. Eventually, I might um, try to develop – my own social media strictly for sports and discourse but right now i ain't on it yet um i'm just pacing myself taking my time with it but um if you ever want to be a guest you're welcome to hit me up on any social media that you follow me on facebook snapchat instagram whatever just hit me up and we'll probably work some stuff out like um Sometimes it's just hard to coordinate shit with everybody. Like I, but mm-hmm. I, I'm always willing to have guests. I actually don't really like talking that much, so I love when I have guests come on, so I can just shut up and let them talk. To be honest, what you think I'm doing? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do it. Like you're supposed to just let somebody else fucking run their mouth all day, and you just shut up, throw them a couple of questions here and there. That's what I actually prefer to do. So I'm always looking. Um, for somebody to come on and and actually man the one topic that I might want to touch on is is that I've been seeing a whole lot of um, you know uproar about these transgender athletes right Mm. mostly transgender women if I'm saying that correctly a man that's transitioning into a woman so a transgender woman I think I'm saying this right but um they've been getting into some female sports and it's been a a lot of people been having different types of feelings about it. So I would like to end up talking to some people about that. I would prefer to actually have female athletes or people from the LGBT community to just see what their opinions are because I actually been seeing a whole lot of opinions, but it's mostly been from like men and shit, mm. heterosexual men, you know what I'm saying? So I would actually like to talk to somebody that's either a female athlete or somebody that's maybe um, – a gay or transgender themselves or but whatever but I, I mean if if uh you know anybody just wants to talk about it i don't give a fuck i'll talk to any about anybody about it there it is so. anybody and everybody about it but anyways we great get on up out here conversations with q you never know who might pop up in here i got my guy Derek stevenson aka d money from sports and discourse we might i might have my guys from btg come on the show i might grab some guys from the beyond the game sports group to come on the show i might have some kids on the show to talk about things that's going on in, in school like bullying and peer pressure and social media in high school in middle school because obviously we didn't have that shit so it's a whole different world and how they handling social media being kids and coming up and the access and the things that they see that man it just blows your mind what these kids is looking at and talking about these days but anyways as always you can follow beyond the game on the youtube channel uh make sure you hit that subscribe button also make sure you share it amongst all your friends family members and everything like that and make sure you do the same thing for sports and discourse and also you can catch both of our shows on all major podcast streaming platforms 
Um, if you can't sit down and watch the show on your phone, you can download the Beyond the Game app on your Amazon Fire Stick. You can check it out on there as well. But we get regular on Battle Here. This is D Money. This is Q Walker from Beyond the Game. And as always, I want you to treat somebody how you want somebody to treat your mama. We have this thing, y'all. Peace.